In this video, we'll talk about using SVG with Base64 to inject our SVG text into the image tag or using the background image property in CSS. Sounds complicated? I think not. If you're new to the Self Teach Me channel, my name is Amy Dutton. I'm a web designer and developer. If you're just getting into this space, sometimes it's hard to know where to start or what resources to trust. I wanna help you level up and get to where you wanna be. If this sounds interesting to you, hit the subscribe button below. This video is part three. <laughs> This video is part three in a multi-part series on using SVGs on the web. Be sure to check out the description below for links to all the videos in this series or the card above for the playlist. Let's circle back to our image tag. In the very first video of this series, we talked about how we could include the path to our SVG file directly within an image tag. We also talked about another option where we could paste the SVG code directly onto the page. Well, what if we tried to paste our SVG code directly into that image tag? I know this probably sounds crazy, but it will actually work. Well, kind of. It's called a data URI. We just need to tell the HTML that that's what we're passing. I'm gonna pull up CodePen. If you've never used CodePen before, it's a code sandbox that's great for code code snippets and experimentation. You can register for a free account today. Feel free to sign up for a free account today. Let's use our image tag and let's give this a width and height of 300. And then within our source attribute, let's say data colon image slash SVG plus XML semicolon UTF-8 comma. And so what this does is it tells the HTML what type of information we're passing in. So I've opened up our SVG directly within VS Code. And you can see here's our file. So I'm just going to copy and paste this directly into CodePen. Now already you can see that this isn't displaying the way that we had hoped. And part of it is because these quotes that are surrounding our source are conflicting with the quotes inside our actual SVG. So I'm gonna change this to single quotes. And we're still gonna have an issue. And part of the problem is we have these pound signs that are on our fill. So I'm gonna remove these fill attributes. We can add them back later. And there is our icon. Okay, so this option doesn't look great within the code, but we can control the fill. So I know I removed these earlier, but we can add these back. So I can say the fill for this path is orange, or I can make it purple. And just remember, if you wanna use a hexadecimal value and be specific, it did not like the pound sign at the beginning. So we wanna make sure that we use the hexadecimal value without that symbol. Just to recap, that data colon image at the beginning tells the browser that we're passing in the image data encoded in UTF-8. I know this sounds technical, but we could encode our image in different formats. Maybe this will help. If you open up a ping in a text editor, this is what it looks like. You get all these crazy characters. You can also convert it to base64, which encodes your image using 64 characters, making it safe for HTML. I'm gonna pop open this website and it will convert the image for us. I'm gonna pass it a ping of the code pin icon. Now, if I click on the show code button, it gives you the information you can pass into an image tag or as a CSS background. Hey, oh, that's our next option. I'm gonna hop back over to code pen and I'm going to create a div with a class of SVG BG base 64. And now within our CSS, I'm going to use the same class and target that within our CSS. I'm going to give this a background. And here, I'm just going to use the exact same encoding that we used on our image tag. I'm gonna copy and paste that. And then here at the bottom, I want it to be positioned at the top left, and I do not want it to repeat. Give this a width of 300 pixels and a height of 300 pixels. Now the color coding here is a hint that something's not gonna work. And part of the problem is we need all of this to appear on a single line in our CSS. So if I remove these line breaks, you'll see everything's green. 
and our icon is appearing. Now, the space that this div is taking up is 300 pixels, but our icon is taking up much less. And part of the reason is that we have a width and a height of 32 pixels and our view box is 32 pixels. Now, if we change our width and our heights to be 300, you'll see that it is much bigger. Perfect, it's showing up just like we wanted. And same as before, we can change the values with our fill attributes to be different colors. The only downside to this method is that it's messy. No one wants to look at all those crazy numbers within your text. So don't worry, I have a solution in mind. And believe it or not, I've saved the best for last. This is my favorite method, <laughs> but you're gonna have to wait to the next video. <laughs> If you've been following along in this series, you'll know there are seven ways you can get an SVG on a page. If you're having trouble remembering all of them or want a document for a quick reference, you're in luck. I've created an SVG cheat sheet that lists out all seven methods and the pros and cons for each. Check out the description below for a free download. Done. Dun, 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 dun. If you like this video and want to see more videos on web design and development, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Hit the bell icon if you want to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Until then, keep coding.